one of the questions, and this is one that we get frequently, and uh, it sounds like uh, the question is, can you, uh, can you adapt or modify the auto DevOps pipeline? And the answer is absolutely yes. And so when we chat about this, we often hear things like, uh, that's great that you have auto DevOps in it, and it spun up a pipeline for me automatically, um, but how about being able to then export that auto DevOps into, let's say, a GitLab CI YAML file? And the answer is uh, GitLab works a little bit differently than that. So rather than having uh, some functionality that you configure via pointing and clicking on things and then exporting that into some type of consumable format, GitLab actually does it the opposite way around. Our auto DevOps functionality is based on predefined code. And if you want to modify that code, you can simply go to it. So for example, here's a project where I have auto DevOps set up. Uh, here are some of the pipelines that you can see that are running. And the way auto DevOps works is if there's no file and the file is called GitLab CI YAML, if there's no YAML file, then it will use the default file. But if you put in your own CI YAML file, then it will process that. It works the same way with, let's say, a Docker file. If there's no Docker file, it will use the defaults. It uses uh, something called Heroku-ish to go and detect the language and figure out what types of containers are needed. But if either there's not a container there, let's say you wanted to have a custom definition for your Docker file, you can actually put in that and then Auto DevOps will use the one in your repository. So I'll show you what the CI YAML file looks like. If we were to go to add a new file, we can choose via template. And for the .gitlab-ci YAML file, you can actually choose several different types of templates for different programming languages. Uh, there are many templates here. But what I want to show you is the auto DevOps template. And so this is actually the code that's executing for those pipelines that you saw Dan showing you. And I could add this file, but instead, since I, I already have it here, I am going to head on back and just open it up here where we can see it with a little bit of syntax highlighting and whatnot. So here is the syntax and the file that shows you. You can see that there are several stages that are set up and even some that we didn't look at in the demo, such as incremental rollout and whatnot. So this is not too long of a file, maybe about, uh, I think it's around a thousand lines. And you can see all of the scripting and all of the, the YAML code that is, uh, or I should say YAML definitions of the, the pipeline here. So this is fully customizable. You can start with that auto DevOps. That basically gets you up and going with zero work. And then when you have that pipeline going, let's say you want to modify something or add to it, you can easily add this file. You have the exact same pipeline and then start modifying it. Or for that matter, you can use this file as inspiration or templates or snippets to plug into another custom CI YAML file. So let's see if we have some other questions here. Another question that we often get will be, how does GitLab's pipelines compare to say a product like Jenkins or some of the other CI products on the market? So in a nutshell, I can direct you to a few places here. So on our homepage, we do have a comparison section where we look at various DevOps tools in the DevOps landscape. So across the entire DevOps lifecycle, there are a whole array of tools and you can compare various tools to GitLab. So for example, if we were to look at, let's say Jenkins, how does it compare? There's some more in depth info here and I direct you to this resource. But in a nutshell, there are some, a few key differences to Jenkins in particular and then to other CI tools in general. So Jenkins in particular is really not one product, but it's, it's really three different products. Historically, there's traditional Jenkins that was not built in a, in a cloud native era to take into consideration things like cloud infrastructure, microservices, serverless, containers, et cetera. 
And that traditional Jenkins has a bunch of plugins. That's the one that's the most popular. There's also problems with it though, in that all of those plugins, whenever you want to upgrade your instance, you have to then go and upgrade all of those plugins. They're often community managed, the plugins break. It was in fact, uh, our co-founder, the pain of him having to upgrade his Jenkins instance is why he decided to build his own CI. So that was the impetus for GitLab CI. Of course, then there's other modern versions of Jenkins, such as Jenkins X, that do take into consideration things like Kubernetes and containers. For GitLab, we don't have separate products for separate things, and there's no choice for you having to decide which one you can use. GitLab by itself just supports Kubernetes, regular GitLab, vanilla GitLab CI is a modern tool based on all of the modern technologies such as containers and Kubernetes that's just built in and we integrate with those things. And we're really, I believe, on the, on the forefront of that space and, and driving more technology. So GitLab's not just a great product for you today, it's one that we will partner with you and be a great product for you in the future. The uh, last way that really GitLab is different is that GitLab CI is built in and integrated as part of the whole flow. So as you saw in the demo, in the merge request, you see the output of your pop pipeline and you can dig into every single part of it and you can even modify the pipeline right from the code repo, for example, by editing this file that exists right inside of the repository. And so this gives developers a sense of self-control or uh, self-service and control that allows them to collaborate together with operations teams. And we have some advanced functionality that we didn't show today around templating, importing, allowing you to have parts of your pipeline that are stock and based on your operations team. And then the developers can import that and then extend and modify it. So there are lots of controls to put in there. But in a nutshell, by allowing developers and operators to communicate and collaborate together in one interface is something pretty unique to GitLab. Whereas using any other type of CI or CD tool, you need to integrate it with a bunch of different tool chains. So let's take a look. It looks like we have a few uh, words in chat here. And what I'll do is I will talk about one more question, which is pricing. And it looks like you can go to our homepage about docketlab.com. And if you check out the pricing link, one of the things I'll point out is you can get GitLab as either gitlab.com hosted on the cloud, where uh, we actually manage that instance and we do all the administration. So you simply sign up for it as a SaaS service, or you can download and install GitLab yourself as a self-managed instance. And of course, you could run that on your on-premises hardware. You can run that in GCP, Azure, AWS, whatever cloud or public or private cloud you wanted to run that in. And our self-managed and our .com actually have the same pricing model. So some of the features you saw, such as our security features, are in our top tier plan. And basically, we also have a free or an open source plan that allows you to get started right away. And you can look at a full set of which features are in which plan on this comparison page where it has a familiar checkbox uh, feature style uh, page there. So with that, it looks like we don't have any other questions coming in. So I do want to thank everyone for ha uh, being on the call today. We will, of course, send you a follow-up email with a link to the demo video and these questions. And if you have any more, please do respond to that email and reach out to our team. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. With that, uh, thank you everyone. Please do have a wonderful day. Cheers.